Hi, everybody, and welcome to this new episode of StageMaker Fridays, Season 4. Um, if you've been following us so far, you'll notice I'm on my own again. Uh, well, my friend Sego had a baby, and, well, she's busy with the baby, and who could blame her? It's more important than machine learning. Uh, but, hey, uh, I'll do my best uh, to help you learn a few things today. So, uh, this is actually the last episode uh, for now. And uh, it's also the last of our uh, AutoML segment. And I think it's a pretty cool one because today we will uh, keep using uh, AutoGluon, the open source library we've been uh, uh, discussing for, uh, for a few weeks now. And we are going to use it to train a, a model for a multimodal data set. So, um, um, this data set contains uh, images and natural language and uh, tabular data. And we're going to see how we can train um, actually an ensemble of models on, uh, on this data set. And as usual, it will only take a few lines of code. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, let me show you where to get the code for, for today's demo. Uh, you'll find it uh, in this repository. Uh, and so just go and grab it and tweak it and, and run it yourself and learn as much as you can. Okay. Uh, in case you haven't watched the previous episodes on AutoGluon, just a quick recap and bear with me if you've heard this a few times already. So AutoGluon is an open source library uh, designed by Amazon Teams. Uh, it lets you build uh, models automatically on uh, tabular data, uh, image data, NLP data, and as we will see today, a combination of those, which I think is a, is a really interesting feature. Uh, code and samples and doc are obviously on GitHub. There's a good research paper um, that tells you more about the, the, the uh, design principles and the, the unique features of AutoGluon. I highly recommend it. I think it's a, it's a really good read. And, um, and that's about it. So uh, it's literally uh, two, three lines of code uh, and build sophisticated models okay all right let's dive into the code right now okay um so this is actually one of the tutorials from autogluon so you you'll find the uh, you'll find this example on uh, on the autogluon website uh of course as well as you know, api uh, information and uh, additional examples etc cetera, etc cetera. okay so that's the that's the topic where uh, focusing on today. Okay, how can we very easily train um, models on data sets that contain a mix of uh, data types, so to speak, right? Um, so in this data set, which is the, the, the pet finder data set, we'll take a look uh, at it in a second, we'll find um, tabular data, um, you know, integers, categorical data, that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, we, we have lots of good algos to train uh, models on that, you know, tree-based algos, etc. We've done this in, in a previous episode and, you know, data scientists out there uh, know how to do this very well. Uh, we have uh, natural language. Uh, we actually have a, a, a long text description, um, which is, you know, very specific and um, and... It's not, it cannot be treated as, uh, uh, as categorical data or, you know, it's, it's text, right? It's language. So we want to apply natural language uh, models to that. And there is a picture. Okay. And of course, we want to use computer vision algos for that. So, you know, I guess you could, you could break, uh, you could break this data set in, in, in three, right? You could split it and you can train um uh, traditional algos on the tabular data and and get some decent results and you could train um natural language processing algos on on the text uh and you could train uh, computer vision algos on the image and then you could combine them you know do ensemble prediction yourself and and i'm sure you would get some okay results but actually, I think um, you know combining uh, the the models in in, in the same training job, uh, which is what Autogluon does, yeah, is actually 
easier, right? As we'll see, very, very little code. And, um, and you know, and it lets you uh, leverage the fact that this is part of the same data set. Right? These things, uh, you know, these uh, tabular, uh, this tabular data, this text and this image are actually related, okay? And, and so you can learn better by treating this as a single data set and not three sub data sets that um, that you try and and, uh, and learn from independently okay so that's what uh, that's what that multimodal uh, problem really is okay and we're going to try and, and do this um, so let's take a look at the data set first okay uh, so here once again uh, I'm uh, I'm working with studio uh, just like last week I'm using a, a, a GPU instance on studio because we're going to be training um, computer vision algos and uh, or I should say fine-tuning uh, computer vision algos and uh, NLP algos which are deep learning based so GPUs are important for for performance okay and uh, I'm actually using a small one here uh, which is uh, G4 GN XL which is the the, the most cost-effective uh, GPU uh, instance you can run on studio so uh, good choice for experimentation for larger scale uh you know you you know we could switch to uh p3 and environments with uh, uh multi gpus etc etc okay but for now that's that's good enough uh and we don't need anything bigger okay all right so of course install uh, auto glue on I, i'm uh, uninstalling torch um because um by default you you know you could have Torch and MXNet installed in the same environment, and that's never a good thing uh, when it comes to GPU. So uh, let's make sure we have a single uh, library and single drivers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. All right. Uh, auto glue on, uh, and then just uh, specify a directory where we're going to download our data set. Uh, it's it's in S3. It's a zip file. Okay. So it's the pet finder data set from uh, from Kaggle. Okay. Uh, so we can easily download and unzip this data set um, to our local instance. And this is what we get. So we get CSV files with the uh, tabular data and, uh, and image directories. Okay. Simple enough. Uh, and we'll look at some examples in a second. Uh, so we can, uh, for example, we can load the, the CSV files and display some of that data. Okay, so um, what do we see here? We have, so it's a pet data set, right? And we're trying to predict uh, the adoption status for each animal and how likely um, the animal is to be, uh, to be adopted. Um, and we have different classes, um, which we'll see here, right? Adoption speed, right? So I think we have five uh, different speeds, okay? So in this data set, we have the, the name of the animal, its age, its breed, which is a category, gender, color code. So all of those are categorical variables. Uh, quantity, so I'm guessing one of each, right? Uh, unless we have uh, uh, twins with the same name, which would be kind of weird. Uh, rescuer ID description, so that's uh, a text a natural language text field that we'll uh, we'll see in a second. So the the label right adoption speed and a path to the image. Okay, so that's what this data set looks like. And so the label is adoption speed, and we can try and display some images. So the, there's very little processing we need to do here. Um, there's only really one thing we need to do, uh, as, as you can see, the, uh, the images, uh, the images column actually contains multiple images per animal. So we're going to go and select, uh, keep only one image. Okay, so we're going to keep, I think, the first image from, from the list. And we'll, uh, we'll fix those uh, image names so that they include the full path. Okay, because that's what uh, auto glue on expect okay we here we have a relative path um, and and that's not fine so we we need to fix those two things okay so that's what we do here okay so we split the images column and we keep only 
the first image, right? Um, and you could argue, well, you know, why are we doing this? We're wasting data, and how do we know it's the best image to keep, etc. And that's that's a really fair point. Okay, that's a really fair point. So you know, maybe we could, you know, maybe we could uh, add multiple columns with different images, or maybe we could duplicate the samples um, as many times as we have different images. I don't know. Good for thought. You know, I really didn't consider this much. Okay. Um, and then yeah, just yeah, just uh, add the uh, the full path. Okay, so now uh, what we've done here is um, we have a single image in the images column, and it has the full local path. Okay. All right. Um, so another look at all the features that we have. Okay, so lots of uh, obviously lots of categories. Okay description and the image and if we look at the description it's it's uh, you know it is really natural language so it's it's not something we can uh, we can easily process with uh, with traditional algos so we'll have to go and use um, um, a deep learning model probably to go and uh, and extract the patterns from this okay uh, before we do that we'll we'll probably need to process that data because um, you know strings are strings and they're not super interesting, and um, we'll need to encode, um, you know, tokenize or vectorize. We'll see what autoglue on does um, this text so that it can be um, learned by a deep learning model. Okay, and yeah, don't worry, we're not going to do it ourselves. And of course, we have pictures. Okay, and of course, it's a cat, right? I guess we'll have a dog later on. So that's that's the data that we have, right? So as you can see, you know, pretty interesting, lots of different things, um, and you know, there is no silver bullet. So you know, no single model, I guess, could uh, could be very efficient on on all of those. And and I'm sure someone will contradict me and say, oh, but I can build a, a custom model that takes everything as input, right? Takes the image, takes the um, takes the, the the description, takes the categorical data, and put all this stuff on the input layer and learn from all of this. And fair enough, I'm sure you can do this. And um, it's probably a, quite a bit of work. So for a lot of people, this is just not an option. Okay, so we're going to use AutoML instead, and we're going to train different algos and see how they do on that data. Set. So here I'm I'm working with the full data set. If you want very short Training times, you can just uh, you can sample the data set just like this. Okay, keep only five hundred rows. Um, but hey, um, this is this is just you know if you want to save time, right? Okay, so we'll work with the full data set. So in in a previous episode, we've discussed how AutoGluon automatically figures out the type um, of each column. Okay, so that's how you do it. Um, you ask Autogluon to infer um, the, the data types from your uh, from your data set. Okay, and so in this case, this is what it comes up with. Okay, so it comes up with uh, a bunch of ints, right, which are mostly categorical, um, some some objects, okay, and and the text description. Um, so that that's okay. Uh, one one important bit is missing, obviously the the image. It did not really pick up uh, the image because what we store here, of course, is just a string, and you know it's not the image itself. So one thing we need to do is to add special type to uh, to the metadata and say, hey, this column is actually an image, right? It's an image path. Even okay, so that auto glue understand. Uh, okay, now I see this weird thing with a lot of slashes is actually a path to an image. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm gonna need a computer vision algo uh, down the line, right? And um, so this is this is really important. Okay, make sure it it's good practice to always check whatever auto ML uh, tool you're using that the data type is the type 
the right type, the type that the model should really consider. Okay. Um, and, and you could probably think that, well, you know, some of those things are integers. So age is clearly an integer. There is a sense of scale. But read one, read two are really categories, right? They're, uh, they're, not, um, they're not integers. So here, we, one extra tweak we could, uh, we could add is to say, hey, uh, by the way, all those columns here, read, uh, gender, color, et cetera, uh, maturity size, and so on, are not integers. They are integer encoded categories, OK? So you can tweak uh, you can tweak this uh, this metadata, and I think we actually did this. Let me try and find where. <laughs> Give me a second. Um, probably here. Okay, bear with me for a second. Yes. Okay. So this is from episode nine. Okay. So if we wanted to squeeze uh, every bit of accuracy. From, from this uh, example, we could try and do something like this. Okay, we could uh, reassign the, the type of those uh, categorical variables to category, okay? And in this example, in episode nine, it actually gave us uh, a, a nice boost um, in, uh, in accuracy. Um, there were a few, uh, you know, a few extra percent of accuracy of AUC, I think. Uh, yeah. So that, that, was, that was meaningful, right? It was not, just me being, you know, picky, it, it actually helped. Okay, so this is how you would do it, okay? In this example, you know, we would go and carefully set all those two categories so that our, um, uh, you know, tree algos know what to do with them. And uh, instead of, you know, trying to find a sense of scale in those numbers, that simply isn't there, okay? So, exercise to the viewer, okay? <laughs> All right, so um, that's what we would do. So now uh, we need to tell um, we need to tell Autogluon that this is actually a multimodal data set, right? And uh, we we have a, a, a default setting for this, okay? Uh, so we can grab hyperparameters for multimodal training jobs and print them out, and this will give us any particular setting. Um, that uh, uh, auto one is going to use for the different algos. Okay, uh, so we see um, we'll be using some default settings for uh, you know light GBM and um, and CAD boost and XJ boost etc. We could we could keep adding. We could add you know algo specific parameters. You know we could go and set uh, whatever we need to set for each one of those. Okay, but here we'll just work with. Uh, whatever default parameters auto on sets. Uh, and what's particularly interesting is this. Okay, so AG text NN um, is actually, hey, let's go and pick deep learning models for NLP. Okay, and uh, and of course AG stands for auto on in case you didn't figure this out. And AG image NN uh, means, hey, let's go and pick computer vision algos. Okay, so last week we specifically worked with an image data set. So we, we only trained computer vision models. But here we can see um, that Autogluon is going to try a combination of all of that. Okay, so it's going to work uh, with uh, tree based algos, it's going to work with NLP algos, it's going to work with computer vision algos. Okay, and you could wonder right now, well, which ones, right? Um, so last week I showed you that those image uh, models, so image classification in this case, came from uh, Gluon CV, right? Which is a, um, a computer vision toolkit for Gluon uh, with uh, with a pretty uh, pretty nice model zoo, right? Uh, we saw that last week. So we can go and pick uh, models from this list. Okay, uh, or we can let Auto Gluon pick default settings, right? So that's um, that's exactly what's going to happen here. Okay, we're going to go and try uh, ResNet probably. Let's let's see what what happens here, and it works the same for NLP models. So instead of using Gluon CV, we use uh, Gluon NLP, 
which, as you guessed, is an NLP toolkit based on Gluon. And again, uh, we have uh, a model zoo. So in this case, it'll be, I guess, text classification. Okay. And, and we, can pick, uh, we can pick from different models. Okay, but we can do sentiment analysis. We can do uh, text, uh, yeah, machine translation, etc., etc., language models, and so on, etc. Okay, so same story. So we have those uh, we have those model zoos are at our disposal. Here we're gonna stick with uh, whatever default model uh, Auto Gluon uses for those, um, but we could we could tweak. Right? We could say, hey, use this particular model or this list of models. Of course, you know, the more models you add to the mix, the longer it's going to train. Um, so find the, the right balance there. Okay. All right. So long story short, um, pay attention to your uh, metadata uh, uh, and, and data types. Okay. And make sure your hyperparameters are okay and make sure the list of values are okay, right? If you see this, you're good to go. It's gonna, it's gonna go and train NLP and deep learning uh, and computer vision, right? Fine, and then training is just super easy. We call the FIT API, okay? So please note, we still use a tabular predictor uh, because, you know, at the end of the day, our data lives inside columns. But it's just that some of that data, some of those columns are not, is not just plain data. Okay. Uh, okay, where's the training set? Of course, what the label is. And then the hyperparameters we just saw, feature metadata for typing and, uh, and the time limit. Okay. And here, um, this is actually the, the the shortest useful training time I could find, you know, anything smaller than that on the full data set actually did not complete because, um, because of the computer vision job and the NLP job. Okay. So again, if you want to train for shorter periods of time, just take less, uh, uh data, data samples, just use a few hundred rows and, uh, and you can train in, I guess, 15 minutes or something. Okay. If you want to keep costs to a minimum. Fine, so uh, off it goes. Uh, so yeah, we have about 12,000 rows. Initially, we have 24 columns. Okay. Uh, auto gluon infers our prediction problem is multi-class. Fair enough. Okay, so we have five adoption speed values. Okay, so good guess. And then, of course, some uh, uh, feature engineering so the usual stuff on uh, on I would say tabular data, you know, filling missing values, um, uh, taking care of categorical variables, okay, and hmm, then we see some NLP going on, right? Um, and we see n-grams, and we see vectorizer. So what's happening here is, uh, since that description column was typed as, hey, this is text, uh, AutoGluon automatically applies um, a vectorizer uh, processing to this. And, and so I'm sure you know, and it's actually count vectorizer here. So what we're doing is we are assigning a unique identifier to each word in the vocabulary, and then for each description, we're counting the, the occurrences of each token, okay? So that's how we transform that uh, natural text into a vector of ints that can actually be useful to an NLP model, okay? So vocabulary size is 5,400 something words, okay? So each description is gonna be a vector of 5,400 uh, something uh, values, and each value is the how many times does this particular word appear in the description, okay? So you could say, well, that's going to be a lot of zeros, right? Because, uh, of course, uh, descriptions are pretty short, and maybe it's, you know, I don't know, 10 to 100 words. So that would be quite inefficient if we stored zero, zero, zero uh, for all the words that are actually missing. So 
Autogluon does this in a in a clever way. They use a they use a sparse matrix, which is a concept we've discussed in great detail when we talked about factorization machines a while ago. Uh, and so this is how that data is stored. So if even if you have a large vocabulary, um, you know it's going to be efficiently stored in memory. Okay, and all of that stuff happens uh, automatically. If you're curious, all the code is obviously on a on, on GitHub, and you can see exactly what kind of vectorization is, is applied. Okay, uh, we see that pet ID is actually dropped, which is a good decision because pet ID is a unique ID. It doesn't carry any meaning, right? We have a different value for every every row. So, how would you uh, how would you figure out that that means anything uh, when it comes to adoption speed? So, of course, we drop this. Okay. All right, and now we see uh, a recap of the data types in the original data set, so the 24 columns, and we see the results post-processing, okay? Uh, and of course, we have a lot of features now because we did apply this uh, vectorization um, uh, process to the, to the description. Okay, so yes, quite a few features, right? So we are, yeah, 23 features were used to generate over 5,500 something features. Okay, so that's what, uh, that's what encoding will do to you. But it's, it's reasonable and, and you know, we have plenty of memory here, so no problem, right? You can see, uh, we're not even using 1% memory, so no, no problem there. Okay, so data processing, took a few seconds. We didn't write a line of code. Again, the, the only thing I could want to tweak here is make sure those categories are categories, but hey, I showed you how to do it, right? Fine. Um, so next step, we've uh, split for training and validation, right? Uh, and off we go. And we see we train eight level one models. Okay, and we'll find the usual suspects. So light GVM, light GVM extra trees, cat boost, um, what else? XJ boost, um, neural net implemented with MXNet, uh, light GVM large. Okay, so of course those models will not make much of the uh, of the image name. Um, they won't make much of those NLP features. So I'm guessing they're really focusing on those um, uh, tabular features that we have, okay? Uh, we Interestingly, we see CatBoost is saying, hey, you really, really have a lot of features. So uh, I'm kind of uh, setting that sampling uh, parameter, right? Because, uh, because do you really need those 5,500 features? Um, probably not, right? Again, these are tokens. Um, not sure Cat Boost makes a, uh, you know, they make a lot of sense to Cat Boost. So you, that's typically one parameter you could say. You could say, well, you know, just uh, uh, sample those even further and and speed up training. Again, training time is uh is not super long here. Well, it's still seventy seconds for this, right? Compared to uh, yeah, eighteen seconds to light GBM. So anyway. Food for thought. Okay, XJ Boost, Neural M, MXNet, Light GBM Large. Okay, and now we get to uh, the deep learning part. So, as we have one of those columns declared as text, we go and use this uh, text predictor model. Okay, and in this case, what we are doing is we are fine tuning. So we are pulling a pre-trained model from the Gluon NLP model zoo, okay? And it's actually a BERT variant. Um, we, could, we could use something else, okay? But it's a BERT variant. Um, we'll probably see the name uh, somewhere below in the, in the log, okay? And we are fine tuning for a few epochs uh, because that's a, a default parameter uh, on, the, on that data set, right? On the, on the NLP part of the data set, which is all those encoded features, okay? And so we see, uh, you know, over time, 
over those epochs, uh, we see hopefully validation accuracy going up a little bit. Yep, okay, that's uh, almost 40% here. Okay, and then it doesn't really improve. Okay. All right, yeah, so it improved up to, you know, 0.4 something, and then probably, you know, we started, uh, you know, I don't know, either overfitting or just not learning right. Okay, so again, we we didn't train for, uh, we trained for about, uh, yeah, about an hour here, okay, 64 minutes. So looking at this, you can say, well, you know, I could probably save time next time around and only, only train for, you know, 30 minutes and just, you know, cut down training times. Okay. Um, all right, so that's useful. So we have a totally different model here. So we have a, 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 BERT, uh, a BERT variant fine tune on this, um, which obviously will bring uh, completely different knowledge when it comes to predicting uh, compared to the tree-based algo. So just another uh, weapon in the, in the arsenal, so to speak. And, and the next step is, hey, we have an image in there, so let's go and pull uh, an image predictor from the Gluon CV model zoo, and and we do the same, and we fine tune for um, maybe just one, one or two epochs here. I'm not sure what the default parameter here. Okay, and so once we've done this, once we've trained those L1 models, uh, we have a collection of very very different models. You know, um, tree based, uh, computer vision, NLP. Right, and the final step is to train a, uh, a, a an ensemble model, a weighted ensemble model that will just predict um, in parallel with all the level one models and just you know output uh, an ensemble prediction. Okay, and so we train for actually a little less than two hours. Okay, so all those models are actually saved in the auto glue on models directory, so you can go and uh, you know, maybe load individual models, inspect them, etc. Everything is is available. Okay, so training completes, and then we print the leaderboard. So we see, uh, you know, training stats, training metrics for the different L1 models. Yeah, let me maybe close this thing. And uh, well, good news is the ensemble model is actually quite better than uh, all the individual models. Okay. And, and, you know, like GBM did pretty well, Catboot did pretty well. Um, you know, the text and image model did, you know, okay, but keep in mind, we didn't train for very long. Okay, this, uh, these are obviously very uh, low values that you would not use for production, um, but I only trained for a little bit and, you know, didn't tweak much, but there's, you know, it's, it's promising, okay? It's promising. All right. Uh, yep, so I can see all of those different models. And yeah, let's try and, uh, and predict one sample. So we can grab, let's grab the uh, uh, sample uh, in this uh, training set. Okay. Uh, we can print the image. So, okay, now there's a dog. So see, everybody's happy. And we can just predict it like that. Okay. So invoking predict. Uh, just make sure you're passing a data frame uh, data and not uh, pandas series data. But if, if you get it wrong, it, it will complain loudly and tell you, hey, I want a data frame. So no, no problem there. Double, uh, 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 double uh, the, the carrots here, right? Okay, and so we predict this as adoption speed four, okay? And, and that's it. So uh, super easy. Um, if uh, obviously the predictor context is still there, but uh, as mentioned in the training log, if we wanted to resume uh, this later on or load models that have been archived somewhere, you can just load them, right? Just like that, okay? So super, super easy to, uh, to work with uh, models you've trained previously, all right? Okay, so there you go. Um, two, three lines of code, and and you can train on on uh, on a complex data set that contains all kinds of different uh, data types, right? Including unstructured data. 
right? So if you want to go really crazy, um, uh, you could say, well, now let's use the best quality presets and I want to train for 12 hours. And, you know, maybe you want to tweak some of the hyperparameters for the algos we worked with here. Okay. And well, that's how you do it. Okay. So starts the same, <laughs> but of course, you know, I just started it maybe an hour ago. So it, it's still, it's still running. Okay. Uh, you can tweak everything. You can tweak the, the number of bags, the number of levels. You, you can just have a lot of fun. Just make sure, you know, you keep budget under control and, uh, and, you actually bring incremental value uh, and you're not just burning CPU or, or GPU time, okay? All right, well, that's pretty much what I wanted to, uh, to show you today. So uh, let me show you where to find the code before I forget. Okay, here we go. Yes, screenshot time, right? And, um, and I think it's it's really interesting. Uh, you know, I'm I'm really curious to see where uh, where O2ML goes next. I think it's uh, you know for for people who don't have a ton of of ML experience, uh, or even for people who have a ton of ML experience but want to quickly explore and quickly uh, evaluate uh, if uh, if this data set shows some promise. I think, you know, O2ML and Autogluon are really, really interesting techniques, right? So it's something you, you definitely want to add to your, uh, to your skills. And as you can see, it's very little code, right? So, so hopefully those episodes on O2ML with SageMaker Autopilot and, uh, and Autogluon uh, are, uh, you know, have gotten you curious and uh, about O2ML and, uh, and go and try it, you know, it's super easy. You're not writing a lot of code. So just grab some data that you have and, and, and train some models and see how it compares to maybe existing models that you have, right? Uh, and compare how, how much quicker you got to, uh, to a working model. Yeah, I'm guessing, you know, uh, O2ML is, is, is here to stay. And I'm really, again, really curious to see where it's headed next. Okay, well, it's the last episode of the season. Uh, I hope I, I did okay on my own. Again, uh, I want to thank Sego for uh, for helping me um, it, it, with the, this season and the previous season. But you know, she couldn't be here today because, again, you know, babies are babies, and uh, that's more important than anything else. So, Sego, thank you so much for your help. And uh, to everybody out there, well, I hope you learn a few things with this uh, episode and the previous ones. And uh, well, I'll see you soon, I'm sure. Bye-bye.